It's Friday! Uh, uh, excuse my licorice. I'm glad it's Friday because, yeah, I'm happy it's Friday. This is what I've got done to this Model A. We're having a little build off of Bear. I'm trying to push him, he's trying to push me. Uh, Bear is a guy I met in Bradley, USA. Um, so anyways, what I've done this week is got the post welded in here. When I said when I weld this up, this is rotten on the outside. The post was also rotten down the face of it, and I did both sides. Um, I, I got the tow boards on this car. I got them welded in, so when I pick it up, it'll all be one piece. As we're trying to, you know, as we're going, this car was not one piece. It was like a front end. It was like a tractor jitney thing. And I made all this square tube. You can see all this framework we made. And then set quarter panels down on top of it, which made the back. Colton got the, the trunk lid all welded up. And you really gotta like that. You take a look at that weld. We haven't ground it off yet, but you grind one side flat, and then you grind the other side. But you can really tell you did a good job on that because nothing is warped. And the reason for being, he put everything on the top and then when he welded it. Um, yeah, I put the windshield post on. Um, I welded that on. That has to be welded on. And I put, I like using that three quarter inch square tube because I can use that chrome. If I want to chrome that window, I can use that three quarter inch chrome like I make a bumper. I can use that on that. And I can put a double piece on there if I want to. And you can see how I got the weld build up on that. We didn't sandblast this kind of thing. We're just welded up. But you can see how I put that weld on there. I had, when I cut the top off, or I cut the roof off the top of this truck, this had to be capped. So I laid an old piece of metal on top of there and laid the square tubing on. I want to make one weld to cover both. I like more weld than not enough. I like to build it up a little bit. So when I grind it off, I've got some meat to grind off. If you hadn't got weld there, you can't grind it off and make it look real good. So I don't mind, I don't mind bubbling up sometimes and put more weld in places because when you grind it off, it looks that much better. Now that post right there, when I made that post, I was thinking, you know, when I, I stuck a piece of metal up to it, first what I did is I stuck a piece of metal up to it and I traced this side and then I traced this side and then I made the, made, the pack, made the piece of metal and put it in there and welded it. When I had it all done, I was thinking, well, poop. I had another side to do. So I'm gonna just show you something real quick, how. how you overcome something like that. You know, because you, you don't really want anything slowing you down. You want something, you want, you want to overcome that. So if I took a piece of paper and laid that on there like that, okay? Now I take that piece of paper and I watch. That is my pattern. So then I cut that out with a pair of scissors, and then I would transfer that to a piece of metal, and I made the other side. That was very fast. That was seconds. So when you get doing this sort of stuff, and you're and you're and you're lost, just think of things that make it easier. And sometimes patterns make it easier. And that piece of paper, just doing that, I just went over and cut that real quick, and went to the other side and rolled the other side up. The tow boards on this car, now we're getting to the point where I'm going to tear it off the frame and uh, put the engine in it. This is the engine that we're going to put in it. This engine was given to me. It was a freebie. All this nice pretty stuff was not. Had to buy that stuff. Um, we were going to put it in another car and it didn't happen, so it's going to happen in this. So what's going to happen is I'm going to try, I'm going to, no not try, I am. I'm going to put that in this and I'm going to try to make it nothing. This is a 1956 322 Buick engine. So I want nothing newer than 1956 on this car. And that way there will kind of stick to a 50s hot rod. Um, I want to put a little taller wheel in the back. Um, we got the roof pulled off. The doors are cut open. Now that the, the doors are cut open, I got Colton over there welding them up. He showed up today and helped me out. And we're just talking a little bit of life. It's kind of fun, you know. As he welded that, as he welded that, we got the piece going to the top. He's got one welded over here from the other side. You can see how we've done that. And when we, when we weld that on there, we don't want to grind the other metal that's there. I don't want to grind that part, I don't want to grind that part. I just want to grind the metal that's there. And he's done a good job on that. And that door doesn't even belong on that car. I'm going to come back over here for a second. This door fits this side. 
This door does not even want this car. This door is a 1939 Plymouth door. 32, 32 frame, uh, 30 or 31 model A back. So this door doesn't even belong there. We put it on there because we can. We used our brain for a second. What we did is here, we sectioned it here to straighten the door out. You can see where we cut it apart. And we done this real quick. We did it at the car show. Uh, me and a couple friends did it in two days. We sectioned the front, made it straight because it was not straight. And then we re-hammered the door skin on. The bottom, it was too long. So what we do, we took it like this and we capped it. And what, what I like to do on the bottom of the doors, if you're sectioning anything, when it comes to the door, don't cut the door in the middle, cut it on the bottom. Just save so much time, a lot more work, and a lot everything. So when I cap it, what I would do is I take a four inch piece, put a 90 on it, slide it up on the door, which I didn't see that 90 up in there, I slid it up on the door, then I just come along with a marker and trace the outside edge. So it's got that round, you can see it's got roundness going on there. Trace that off and then cut that piece and then put it back on and, and butt weld it right along this edge. When I butt weld it, I'll, leave, I'll, I'll put it like this. So we do not walk, warp the door. So now if I get any pinholes in it, I'll walk it up to the, to the window and x-ray it. You know what I mean? You had to x-ray, I showed before how to x-ray that. When you put that up to the light, you'll see light come through that and you'll know. And I'll just show you right here now, just very quickly. You can see the holes in the bottom of the door because we have just x-rayed it. So it's that simple. If you want to make a door for something, this door doesn't fit this car. I haven't got the doors. I'm not going to go try to find the doors. I'm going to make the doors. So that's what we're doing there. That just sits on there. And as you can tell, that's just square tubing, how we set everything together. And that will set on there. We'll put some hinges on it. And we'll hinge that door on there. Uh, and that's how she rolls at the shot. That's how far we're at. Everything's going good here at the shop. We cannot, we cannot be Green Goblin Customs anymore because where we're going in life right now, or where we're going, you know, where, where we are going, um, we will not be able to use that name because it's, you know, we can't fight Disney. Um, that's, that's their name. And uh, we have changed our name and we're gonna be, you know, doing it slowly and doing it whatever. It's going to be called Hiltz Auto Company, and because we build cars, that's my last name, and uh, we may as well. Back in the day, every time we go to the museum, you always see what kind of, you know, what their name was on the car. So it's going to be Hiltz Auto Company. Embrace it, love it, and have a good Friday! Because we are. Me, Sexy, and Colton, we're just sitting here chilling like villains, man. We're chilling like villains. It's snowing outside, loving it. It's warm. It's good. We're having a good time. People that spend time in the garage learn a lot about life, you know, because you talk and you, and you stop for a moment and you learn. When you're out running the roads, doing this and doing that, you know. I had a good friend that passed the last two days. Not, you know, a real good friend, you know. Um, his name is Roy Brown. I was talking about the Roy Brown gas pump. He has passed. And uh, it's funny how we became such good friends over the car hobby. Yeah, we became friends because we had the exact same interests. And uh, I'm going to miss him until the day I drop. You know, because we all know it's coming. Um, no one's making it out alive. But I have great respect for my friend Roy Brown. And um, I will never forget him for as long as I live. Um, hats off to all the car people. Have a good Friday.